Hi, so today I would like to make uh, an introduction to the major trade routes in Western Europe during the Low Middle Ages. Um, I think it's interesting as a topic because, you know, for the same reasons I talked about such broad um, topics, both uh, temporally and geographically, um, for the sake of having a bit of uh, overall dimension of how um, <coughs> um, and, and uh, about you know the the, the evolution of, of European history from from the above, mm, not just from local perspectives, but you know trying to giving a dimension to the phenomena that took place in Europe, especially during the low Middle Ages, that were um, uh, definitely a very dynamic moment of reprisal and of development, and that therefore. Um, uh, really shaped um, and changed the, the, the face of of, of uh, European society at the time, um, <coughs> and um, I'm talking about trade because trade is really what um, what puts things in motion, literally. Mm? Whether it's money, it's goods, um, and 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 this happens for obviously a necessity that is generally aim to live better and therefore to grow, to increase production and this is what Europeans were doing um, <coughs> um, very very fast uh, at the time. There, there is an acceleration in the second half of the Middle Ages towards that direction that eventually would um, uh, explode <laughs> in, uh, in, in modern in, mod in the modern age. Um, we can say that um, in, in the first part of the low middle ages, let's say, let's divide in low and late middle ages, um, so from the 11th to the 13th century, um, the major trade routes in the West were actually pretty, um, <coughs> pretty simple um, in terms of ge geographical areas and directions that and, 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 and connections between them. Because the <coughs> the real uh, the real centers the real uh, fulcrum mm, fulcrum of the um, of, of trade and of uh, manufactures in Europe were Italy in the south and the Flanders in the north. Um, this happened because uh, these were the most urbanized uh, regions of Europe, who had a uh, by the way, a privileged um, a geographical uh, position uh, for trade, for obvious reasons. Um, Italy, um, indeed, um, is in the middle of the Mediterranean, so um, all the trades that pass from there, in a way or in another, uh, pass from Italy, and <coughs> obviously, you know, it, it does not suffice just to be placed in one in, in one one point, you also need resources and strength, and definitely Italy had a lot. It was extremely um, um, heavily urbanized, uh, more than Flanders. Indeed, it was also very, very densely populated. Um, there was a very high per capita um, per capita wealth in Italy that was the highest in the world. Um, and therefore, there was a, uh, there were a lot of, uh, of of energies, of resources, uh, and strengths that were um, put in motion um <coughs> from from the Italian peninsula to uh, to to increase trade. While Fland Flanders have um, a similar, uh, well, not really similar because Flanders are aren't a peninsula indeed, uh, but let's say that they have a privileged position because of um, their location on. <coughs> the Channel and the um, the North Sea. Um, so they, especially from the time of the Carolingians, so where when continental Europe was was on the rise, and uh, um, who has studied Piran knows that Piran gave great importance to the um <coughs> trades that began to be put in motion in um, in, in the North Sea. In, in northern Europe in general from from the eighth century t uh, onwards uh, especially thanks to you know the, the, the Carolingian Empire but eventually the, the Viking Age and all the intensification of exchanges and and and, uh, <coughs> and trades uh, in the north 
and um, and Flanders was was also um, uh, not as much as Italy, but definitely more than any other um, region in Europe at the time very densely urbanized. Um, the cities were generally uh, not really uh, maritime centers. Mm, the, the centers of uh, of trade in Flanders were generally uh, inland. Differently from Italy, where especially the marinary, the maritime uh, republics were were then uh, were there on, on <laughs> uh, at sea, literally. Um, Flanders would deal differently from that, but Flanders had also a lot of rivers, uh, which the Italians didn't have, except from for for the north, where there was indeed a trade, an important trade. Uh, all over the Po River, but definitely Flanders uh, have this concentration of very, very big um, continental um, rivers that um, that basically um, that passed on in Flanders for eventually uh, going into into the North Sea that passed from these cities, and therefore even the flatlands of Flanders were extremely easy to carry um, <coughs> for carrying goods. Um, and this was definitely uh, a very important um, reason, but it wasn't just about geography. It was mostly about politics and uh, and and, um, and society and social assets. Um, it's interesting that Italy and Flanders in this um, in this context were um, uh, peripheral areas of were both peripheral areas of the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, part of Flanders would be eventually um, uh, invaded by the French, uh, who originally had, uh, you know, the, the county of Flanders was originally um, in France and other territories in Flanders broadly meant instead were parts of, of the Holy Roman Empire. And Italy was in this, um, <coughs> you know, shelter created by the Alps that made the Germans uh, invading and controlling it with difficulty, and uh, Flanders had a joy, and, and therefore there was a lot of autonomy in Italy that also, um, you know, uh, freed um, a lot of uh, a lot of investments that would have been otherwise uh, uh, absorbed instead by by a kingdom that wasn't there indeed, if not by. Uh, if not formally, the Flanders, um, since the time of the uh, of the Carolingian Empire, had enjoyed uh, quite of a, a quite of a freedom. We can say that Flemish um, communities, especially during the Viking Age, were uh, the most exposed to Viking raids. Um, uh, for for the geographical reasons mentioned above, they were close to Scandinavia. Uh, they they were um, crossed by rivers that could be sailed by Vikings, and there was a flat land. The, the, the land was quite fertile, so raids would hit there. And since um, royal um, <coughs> power grew increasingly weaker uh, during the Viking Age in continental Europe, um, these communities were essentially allowed by the same kings to, to have their own rights of administration, especially of self-defense against these rights. So we can't say that the tradition of autonomy were not of independence uh, from, from an ideological point of view that characterized the Flanders and especially the, the northern part, Frisia, uh, that was, you know, very different from the south, but still, you know, retained this common uh, political feature, uh, really started from, from that point. So we're talking about two areas that were uh, rich, urbanized, uh, densely populated, well connected, and geographically well well exposed. And um, and therefore, um, one of the cons, and, and really uh, the greatest part of European um, financial wealth really was in the hands of the Italians and of the Flemish. Um, and uh, the continental dynamics, therefore, um, of, 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 ex of trade exchange um, gravitated around this axis that uh, connected the Italian peninsula to the Flemish. Um, the Flemish uh, regions, and, and um, however, there were, there were different roles into this. Italy and, and Flanders didn't really work in the same way in this process, in spite they were so vital for essentially the same 
the same thing and the development of European economy. Uh, Italy um, w was was substantially um, um, uh, a mean. Mm? It was a, a mean be that um, between the the east mm, and the west, uh, meaning that through the Mediterranean it was quite easy for the Italians, rather than you know selling their own goods, to make money taking you know goods from from the west and from the east and passing through Italy, the Italians became rich. Obviously, the Italians developed this by uh, actively pushing this trade by you know going by sea and building up fleets. Uh, in this sense, you know, even the, the Crusades were put in motion by the Italians because they were the, the only European communities to have, um, um, besides the, the Byzantine Empire, uh, um, fleets worth, uh, worth of this name that were essentially, if not, uh, they, were, they were permanent because trade was permanent and therefore the, Italy always had on the coasts these means of uh, keeping ships and uh, both for war and for trade and and and, and creating this uh, this mobility and putting um, goods uh, goods in motion instead Flanders worked in, in a different way uh, first of all um, it was connected uh, in, in f from his side to the uh, the famous um, affairs of Champagne um, and um, and and it tended, uh, w which means that um, basically um, um, she started to. I, I use she for Flanders, so it's to be honest with Czar. I don't know why I did it. Um, but I mean, is that they uh, began to uh, to develop um, um, the uh, a, a textile industry. Mm -hmm. They began to develop a textile industry that could be sold. In the in the fairs of Champagne and, and not only there, uh, and that therefore was based more more than 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 Italy on the production of um, autochthonous uh, autochthonous goods, um, and um, and um, this was generally the asset that you can find in me in the low Middle Ages in terms of European economics and everything passed. Um, through these axes between uh, Italy and Flanders. Now, I, I don't want to oversimplify by saying that there weren't other trade routes, but um, this was really the, the block, the major block that in quantitative terms pushed um, European uh, economy. And, and things start, in fact, to change, to complicate in this, uh, this frame um, let's say, the, the especially at the end of the 13th and especially with the 14th century, where there were changes in the um, uh, in the um, trade routes um, uh, that uh, in the trade itineraries that um, modified the the lines of traffic and that prepared for economical evolutions that um, that were really destined to to have a long term mm, well through um, the modern age mm. um, and um, we can think really about many things and uh, now we will try to list at least the most important um, first of all uh, we saw that uh, in order to reach the uh, the Netherlands uh, there was um, a, a much, um, you know, I, I, during this um, during this period, it was began to be used uh, always more frequently the Atlantic route, mm? and by land um, to mm, to to cross the Al the Swiss Alps and the uh, Bavarian Plateau to prosecute uh, eventually um, through the Rhine Valley. W what happened essentially is that uh, there was um, a shifting um, uh, from the French route that instead had connected Italy and, um, and, and Flanders, especially uh, through these important Junction uh, meeting point of the uh, the the Champagne's fairs that had 
uh, where where Italians and Flemish and people from from and merchants from all over Europe would 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 meet. And and this was um, you know uh, an immediate it had an immediate effect on um, on France. A negative effects, of course, because uh, therefore, in this way, it was less engaged in great uh, European trade. Um, and of this, um, we we see that the the French ports in the Mediterranean greatly suffered, um, uh, while at the same time, um, uh, the, um, uh, the 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 other uh, itineraries uh, were growing and causing the decline of the Champagne's fairs that had been, you know, for for uh, more than two centuries, the heart of the continental exchanges. Now, y the dynamic is quite simple. Why did it change, really? Well, there were many reasons, um, which are very complex to scope, so let's go by order. Uh, first of all, the Atlantic route to reach the Netherlands from the Mediterranean. And that was uh, developed for many reasons. Um, however, um, you know, t uh, um, t political as well as technological, uh, or a mix of them. Um, essentially, uh, we when we think about land routes, we have always to think that, um, on average, they were more risky and more costly than uh, sea routes, because it's true that at, at sea you can make a shipwreck, that there is a margin of uh, of um, of risk uh, in general, but this was much greater on land with brigands, with uh, with taxes. Especially think about the um, the um, the fragmentation of, of of Europe and all the uh, you know the, the fact that if you wanted to cross um, you know <laughs> Europe um, by by land, you had to pay a toll basically at at every bridge or every road and at every um, every castle you had to pass. So this was a very high cost. Um, it was extremely more expensive in terms of energy because you had to be uh, to carry things uh, by animal force, um, which required feeding the animals and uh, and and time. Also, time was much longer on on land. Um, the, the roads were what they were. Um, this is a problem that you find technically um, until the, 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 the spread of train um, of trains and with the steam engines because even I remember clearly that even in, uh, in in German literature there is a reference in modern history to all the fact that the, the, the Holy Roman Empire was fragmented with all these small German states and, and, and these merchants that would cross them you know would have to pay uh, different tax every <laughs> every 10 miles every time they entered into uh, an, another small German state uh, so land movements were historically speaking since the, the 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 ancient world definitely more expensive than the the sea ones the sea ones usually proceed with strengths of the winds uh, which um which were well known i mean uh, the 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 sailors knew uh, all over the mediterranean and uh, and the atlantic i mean uh, we we have to think that uh, first of all all the sailing at that time was uh, um, was done um, uh, by um, in um, by uh, cabotaging, essentially, um, mm, you know, proceeding near the shoreline. So um, the the mm, some the sailors would know in that mm, portion of coast which winds were there um, in certain moments of the years in which and therefore to, to exploit their force to move and it was relatively and therefore it was all done by wind force without expanding other energy there were oars obviously but uh, they were usually uh, you know they didn't oar from I don't know from 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 Genoa to to the Netherlands making <laughs> thousands of miles of coast they would obviously use the wind and it was much quicker to get there uh, <coughs> it was still dangerous, but uh, there was no comparison in terms of 
conveniency uh, between land and, and, and trade routes. Um, and um, and we have to think that this is a moment in which uh, the Europeans were doing um, a very incredible progress with sea uh, technology mm -hmm. um, uh, and, um, and and building ships that uh, had a stronger and larger hull uh, that could better resist the, the oceans waves um, and that could fit many uh, many material in. Um, uh, this is also the time gunpowder um, spread, and uh, it's seemingly the the the, the resistance, uh, the physical resistance made by the mass of goods uh, carried on ships, um, allowed um, and and in favor favored the installation of gun on of of. Uh, of cannons over the ships because therefore ev at every shot you know the 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 the, uh, the mass of the uh, of the of the ship would allow this you know reaction um, of, of the sh of the explosion to be better absorbed thanks to the great holes and the the the, 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 uh, the stocks that were containing them you know a lot of things that put uh, emotion, both as c as causes or consequences, or both things at uh, at once. Sometimes, the development of ships that could better exist the ocean that were larger um, and more effective for those trades. Very important, however, in the opening of the sea tra of the sea trade on the Atlantic coast was um, the war against Genoa and Venice that eventually was won by Venice meaning that uh, the Genoa wasn't annihilated Genoa grew to be uh, still a, a very consistent power well through the, the modern age but uh, in a certain sense the Genoese be um, understood that after the, the huge defeats that they had against the Venetians that had however you know th there were you know you know sometimes they also managed to beat the Venetians but uh, uh, overall Genoa was a weaker system compared to Venice uh, Venice was favored by controlling the Adriatic Sea and the access to Greece and the Aegean and from there to, to Syria and Egypt so Genoa simply said uh, this is not convenient anymore for us we can continue the war but we would go ruin so let's go uh, let's do a thing let's um, um, let's improve our trade uh, with the West that was already present because the Genoese o had already expanded on the Aragonese markets and even in the one in the Muslim ones of of southern Spain and from there they could easily go um, uh, across the Strait of Gibral uh, Gibraltar and eventually climbing up uh, the Iberian Peninsula and, and France and arriving to the Netherlands and, um, <coughs> um, uh, and, and making the Atlantic, um, the Acla the Atlantic uh, route uh, grow, uh, uh, growing in importance. This was also important for many other reasons because this is the same period where the Portuguese with Italian ships and Italian sailors began to make um, uh, sea expl geographical explorations on the Atlantic uh, islands and uh, on the Western African coast. Uh, it was all, you know, all intermingled, all interconnected as a phenomenon because there were people trying to find new solutions to make money that incidentally would produce something bigger. And this tells you how trade was important indeed. And why instead the route from Italy, not across France, but across Germany? Well, this is probably a bit more complex to explain. I, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, generally speaking, let's say that um, the Germany and German cities, and especially in southern Germany, had been on the rise um, in, in, uh, in the previous centuries. So we find the Rhine Valley, uh, Bavaria, there were lands that were uh, technically close to Italy because uh, as soon as you cross the Alps uh, to certain passes you're immediately in Bavaria, you're immediately even close to the, the river, the, the Rhine River uh, from Switzerland in fact um, and, and obviously the Rhine was, uh, could be crossed with ships um, and it was d uh, definitely um, 
um, navigable since a very early time. The Romans had their fleet on the Rhine and uh, there had always been a lot of contacts, for instance, uh, between England and Germany um, that took took place uh, across this river, very large river. So um, that would be a very good route to exploit instead of doing it by land until um, in the Champagne on, on foot or on, on carriage. Uh, you arrive on carriage until Switzerland, from there you took the Rhine uh, with new uh, works of canalization. This is also the time in which the Swiss are on the rise, not surprisingly, as a political force, autonomous force, within originally within the same Holy Roman Empire. And also Bavaria had a great development. There were big important cities like uh, especially Augsburg, uh, and, and or Regensburg that were quite important for trade and Bavaria is extremely close to Venice uh, by land so uh, <laughs> it's no surprise that a lot of Germans usually from southern Germany go so often to in vacations in, in, in Venice because it's very close um, and still today um, and Venice was definitely one of the most important world markets at the time. A lot of things would come from the East, and the Germans would consociate um, uh, with, uh, you know, in, into these um, um, into these enterprises, uh, into uh, into these companies. Uh, and it's no su su surprise that. Uh, um, uh, that uh, that in Venice th there is the famous uh, German war uh, warehouse uh, the, uh, that that was a place where there were German uh, merchants uh, that had their affairs their business there and it tells you how important the German in fact southern German Bavarian uh, usually community uh, was active in Venice and participating to the Italian business as well. Um, and, and, and so it was very easy. Also the Danube from, from Bavaria could be uh, easily navigable uh, up to a certain point that goes uh, west towards the Rhine. Um, and, and, and let's say that with the frag there was probably also political reason because with the fragmentation of the Holy Roman Empire uh, probably a certain uh, major development of German free cities and therefore uh, urban centers that were center of commerce had developed, um, escaping a bit the grip of the local dynasties up to a certain point, I must say, but uh, definitely German cities were on the rise uh, in the south at this point. Um, so here uh, you, you find how it was explained why France um, was basically, um, the, the French route was was weakened through through this period. Um, and, and there is also another major important factor that <laughs> you can't forget for thinking about 14th century France that is a, a little thing called the Hundred Years War <laughs> that basically um, uh, devastated the whole French territory uh, with very intense raids and uh, uh, with, with, with distractions especially of crops and other product, uh, production um, structures that that really put in cri crisis also French economy and therefore um, you know merchants instead of risking to be robbed at best and slaughtered at wars by crossing France during these uh, very wild events would take another path. This is also the moment of in not surprisingly in French history of the Jacquerie so these um, revolts that of uh, this peasants revolts that were uh, eventually put down that however can tell you how um, destabilized politically Fran the, Fr the French kingdom was from from the previous century that had instead marked the, the rise and the splendor of the French kingdom itself all because of the the, the defeats that the French suffered during the Hundred Years War uh, the John II, the French king taken prisoner at the Battle of Poitiers, so all these debts that uh, that the English made the French paying. So um, uh, you see how many reasons actually bring um, something so 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 big and apparently easy, mm, like yeah, 
there are new routes uh, that are these main ones and why is that a lot a lot of reasons combined and in te this tells you how by the way things could for, for relatively uh, smaller reasons uh, get in another way mm? um, and um, and as we were saying also the 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 French ports would suffer this because normally um, the Italians would go from places like Messina in Sicily or Naples or Pisa or Genoa to Provence, so to southern France, to Marseille, for instance, um, to to bring the goods that they that they took from the east. Now the Italians instead would go across the Alps into Germany, and and cities like Marseille heavily suffered uh, suffered of um, of this. And I it's interesting also from this point of view that uh, Provence was. Uh, a, a, a territory uh, of the the Angevins, the the Angevins of Naples, that ruled both on the Kingdom of Naples and on Provence and in other French territories in the north. Most famously, the the, the Anjou, from which the the Angevins take their name from. Um, and um, and this is a moment of dynastic crisis in the Kingdom of Naples. It was the major. Um, the major dynastic possession that the Angevins had. So even the, the deep crisis that followed, for instance, uh, the Black Death with the financial collapse of, of Tuscan merchants that had the um, a lot of, of rights and prerogatives in the Angevin kingdom brought to um, a weakening of Provence also from the, the, the Neapolitan route. Uh, while Genoa and Venice, in spite of their um, very fierce competitions on the seas, uh, were 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 rapidly uh, rising at their expenses, even though they were also intermingled, because Genoa had usually pointed on on the Angevins at that point. Genoa had has really to transform herself in, in this period and creating the Atlantic route about which we have talked about. Um, and um, what else can we say? Um, in general, um, of this obviously took advantage of our communities and also uh, Flanders. Uh, the Italians, we can say, were on the rise a bit for the same reason. Um, the the Flemish and the the Flemish markets instead got really a lot of income from the French crisis more than the Italians because the Italians basically switched routes. So they were on the rise because European economy, European markets were always more demanding, and and they were the only guys at that time before the opening of the. Um, of the Portuguese and Spanish routes on in the Atlantic and the other worlds that um, mm, you know that could provide those um, those goods. It's essentially with the discovery of America that the Italians declined from from uh, their preeminence in, in, in European trade. Uh, th so it was relatively mm, relatively, I say, an influent for the Italians that the French would I mean the, would decline from 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 this point from this uh mm, from their position in their in their trade nets but those who really benefited of it or at least benefited more of that were indeed the Flemish markets um and uh, and particularly uh, Bruges the city of Bruges that became a quite important financial center um and um and, and and what happened in France was another phenomenon that probably also helped strengthening the, the French monarchy in some measure, especially in this very uh troubled time during the Hundred Year uh, Years War, is that um Paris um grow uh, grew increasingly as a commercial and financial centre between the Alps and the uh, lowlands. 
This happened, I believe, because there was an evident crisis, crisis uh, in in the term in terms of uh, even of availability of um, of natural goods from France. I mean, if if half of France is conquered by the English at that time, and 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 you as king of France have to struggle to find money uh, and 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 doing something like that, you would better try to you know to, to push on the financial s development of your of your centers and indeed Paris was the greatest center in the area that had remained uh, in in French in the French hands um, being already essentially the, the capital of France uh, in many ways um, and therefore Paris probably m s even in, in, in probably also Paris benefited of the decline, relatively of the decline of the Champagne's fairs, because uh, these these fairs indeed were uh, Champagne is close to Paris, but it would probably er enrich certain nobles that were there around. It would make money that wouldn't go into directly, at least, into the king's hand. With the decline of those fairs, uh, the other big center that would, you know, m put similar things in motion in terms of, of market and of exchange was Paris. That was a, a big city with, uh, with a substantial, uh, you know, it was a place where it was substantially sh safe to invest in because it's the center of the French kingdom and it doesn't matter how weak the French kingdom is, it's still a hell of a city and and you would you would like to go there making your business and, and participate in going to 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 see markets and, and stuff so this is maybe just a bit more of a speculation but I think the the, the core uh, concepts have been expressed um, so as always um, thank you for listening <laughs> having the patience for listening if you liked my video, leave a like or share it, preferably, <laughs> even even better. Um, and uh, if you have any question, please um, please ask, please write it down in the comments or just write me an email. And if you want um, a personalized video on your own on a topic that you wanna that you're interested in about medieval history or about general history, whatever you like. Uh, please ask me because I could take that into consideration for my next videos. So I thank you very much again and see you to the next time. Bye.